Okie dokie, right then. So uh, here we are. We are with uh, Sammy and Ennis uh, from the Green Cloaks uh, with us tonight as well um, because this is now going out on audio, so no one's going to actually sort of see this. Uh, is m- myself, Stuart Edwards, uh, Luke Pitt, and Rob Davis. Uh, so hello to you all. Hello. 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 Hello, Sammy. Hello, Ennis. How are you? Surviving. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So uh, this is going to be a little bit of a special because um, we mm-hmm. want to talk. You know, we met. We, we we met these guys, especially met Ennis and what have you, um, at the um, Curious Pastimes event this year that we went to. Um, yeah. uh, we really got having a good, really good chat with Ennis about the green cloaks and that sort of thing. So we thought it'd be a good idea to get them all on um, and to have a little chat. Uh, and of course, hopefully to, uh, let's say, uh, strong arm them into letting us uh, come along as well and, and, and seeing what, what they do. So um, let's let's kind of start this this whole thing off. We'll have questions, I want to have you as we go through, and I'm sure we'll, uh, Luke and Rob as, as well and myself, will have uh, <laughs> questions. Luke just woke up. Uh, <laughs> 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 well. We'll have questions as we go along, as is uh, as is usual. So, um, right. So the first thing that I suppose I have to ask uh, to you know either Ennis or, or Sammy, uh, Green Cloaks. What is it? Well, Sammy, I'm going to let you go first. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, so Green Cloaks is uh, obviously a like sci-fi mixed in with a fantasy lot um, where you have the ability to be able to use nerf guns and swords spears axes all of that jazz um uh so obviously it's set in the future and it's a lot that me and ennis have been running uh for the last six years so it's been around for a little bit Mm -hmm. um and it's kind of getting to the point now where we're getting you know roughly on average uh 150 plus players coming to each event um so we're getting out of that kind of you know small in that medium kind of top medium level type thing at the moment um so yeah that, that's that's kind of the the big bit at the moment for us okay cool uh, yeah well i don't know about you but that sounds like 40k to me um, <laughs> <laughs> i just thought i'd throw that one in you know i have the old chestnut of 40k yeah oh, oh, all of the chestnuts let me roast them right now yeah. um, <laughs> you gotta go you gotta go with that one man let's end them yeah yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll take that, that one up. <laughs> i'll take that i'll run with it and throw it in the fire just as um just as lt cp empire or any other fantasy game is lord of the rings uh, on steroids literally um yes i i think you will see things that are <laughs> you will see things that are there um from 40k and things that you will familiar be very familiar with in that sort of element in the world but at the same time just like any other system we're not bound to that we try and move away from that we went away we made a world where we drew inspirations from all sorts of places places both fantasy uh, and futuristic so yeah. you may see things from uh, things like Firefly you may see things that you might go oh that's very Starship Troopers and you may see stuff that's you know from Tales of Earth Sea right the way through to um, I don't know Lord Doctor, of the Rings and Doctor Who? Doctor Who Doctor Who yes yeah, you yeah. will bump into that though time travel's getting a hell of a lot harder <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's locked now I think isn't it well, time travel has always been a bit difficult, as long as you, you know, if you don't have a flux capacitor and a Mr. Fusion. So um, we can dream. We can dream. <laughs> I suppose we're talking about this as if it's genuinely, you know, kind of doable, and we're just finding it a bit tedious now. You know? of, course, of course, it's doable, Luke. I mean, you know, haven't you got a time machine? Everyone's got a time machine. Not other than me. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's, it's a good point because I think you can get um, stereotype, can't you? And people will always try and associate something yeah. with something that they know. But I genuinely think that a, a lot of you know uh, LARPing groups do take inspiration from lots of different places in order to you know take bits that they like, bits they think are successful. Yeah. 
I actually don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think that's the beautiful thing about LARP, isn't it? It's just that we yeah. can we can see lots and whatever we want, wherever well, we want, and do whatever. We yeah. Can. Well, I mean, you know, think think about it. I mean, <laughs> there's no there's no such thing anymore as an original story. It's as no. simple as that, right? I mean, everything's been done. I mean, you only need to look at at the at the cinema, I almost at movie theatres these days. How old am I? Mm. Uh, at the moving pictures. Um, and, um, <laughs> you know, they've just redone, for instance, uh, Murder on the Orient Express. Why? Why, why do that? And to Yuna as well. Yeah, you know, that yeah, came yeah. back again. You know, and yeah. it was rubbish in comparison to the new one, in my opinion. <laughs> exactly. I actually read, you know, about the film Blade, and it was 2049, and someone actually put out, he said, so if I haven't seen the other 2046, is this a problem? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Blade. <laughs> um, Blade but, Runner, uh, yeah, Blade Runner are, 2049, yeah, I, I yeah. saw that, yeah. Almost, <laughs> al- almost fell asleep. <laughs> well, do you know what? I, th- I think this is just the thing we, we should at least recognise that this yeah. is, isn't it? It's not necessarily a bad thing, you know, and I think that uh, people should give it a go. I mean, uh, I don't know whether that leads us quite nicely into new people and with two green cloaks about how... Well, I mean, I mean, actually, the, the, what, I, what, what I did want to ask more than anything else is with with all the things that are out there and what have you what is so different about your larp to any other <clears throat> larp that you know we've managed to go along to Ooh. Ooh. well sammy you know you've been following them longer than i have he says terribly hiding under the table yeah. uh, you know where <laughs> they've been <laughs> yeah um yeah no, that's fine um so with with gc it's, mm-hmm. it's kind of one of those larps where if you have never larped before yeah. Um, you can come in uh, mm-hmm. with very, very basic kit, and it was always designed to be that way. It was always designed that you wouldn't have to spend, you know, a hundred plus pounds to to get a kit. You know, you could just go to a local charity shop, yeah, and you know, pick up a load of stuff. I mean, to be fair, that that's what I did for you know the first two, three years while you know I was still at uni, yeah. uh, and I got into green clothes. And it was kind of like, okay, well, I need to get X, Y, and Z. Do I can get it from the charity shop, and it's only going to cost me like twenty quid. Yeah. And that's what that's what we really wanted. We wanted people to be able to go, okay, well, I've got all the basic kit. I can go, yeah. and then I can build it if my character survives. Um, and we have different regiments that have very basic stuff that is their template, and then you can add on top of it. So for yeah. new people coming in, they can just go, okay, got this. I can go in here. Or, okay, I've got that. I can go there. And it just allows for that easier, you know, players to kind of get involved and, you know, start working together in the team. Because I've found just by watching, like, people at GC, um, that they will, you know, there's a new player. Oh, let's, let's grab the new player. Let's, let's help them. Let's, let's push them forward. Or, you know, oh, here's some plot. You know, oh, let's give it to the new guy. Let's, let's okay, try and yeah. push it out. So it's, it's very, there's a massive emphasis on, on helping new people. And inclusion. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, that's one of the things that we really pride ourselves on is being able to help and progress new laughers. Okay, so yeah, you, so you, I love you, the idea that kit can be really basic, but built on over time. That that's going to be that's really a really big help. I, I, I speak to quite a few new laughers who don't want to spend money, but they want to experience. Yeah. Mm. So so you've really sort of uh, you know taken it on board then to make it as accessible as possible to new players and veterans alike. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I start when we when we started, uh, we were about twenty nine people in the field, um, and prior to that, it was a case of, hey guys, do you want to go camping? Yeah. 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 Um, and a load of them came down with army surplus gear and stuff like that, and I said do you have any Nerf guns, guys? Because I'd been LARPing for a little while by then, and I started just adding little rules here and there, and then built mm. it up and built it up and built it up. Sammy, I'm going to tease here a little bit, was one of my yeah. sort of protégés. He's like, oh, no, I'm never going to play. I'll only ever be a monster. And now he's the leading <laughs> one, of the reg- one of the regiments and is also um, a senior member of staff. Mm. So, you know, and we, we can take this further by one of the traders who said, oh, no, I shall never LARP. And now he's right stuck in there. <laughs> to the very beginning and Sammy's just looking <laughs> I can see Sammy smiling away but wouldn't you agree that many LARPs um, I mean if, if I were to look at the green cloak because I am <clears throat> very stuck in my ways I, the LARP has to really appeal to me <laughs> yes right? he and is I, and I'm absolutely <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, it's all about it's, it's very I'm very Tolkien-esque as a stereotype yeah, but I, would you I, agree I, that uh, an awful lot of this you've got to go and just give it a go 
I think yeah. if you, I think you're missing something if you if you if you don't just go and give it a go and just say, well, look, do you know what? It's just a weekend. I'll give it a whirl, and if I don't like it, at least I know I've tried it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I, 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 oh, go on. Sorry, mate. Go on. You go, mate. Okay. Um, it was uh, one of the things as well that we looked at when we was doing pricing for for events and. Obviously, there's a lot of events out there, and this this isn't insulting anyone or, or anything like that. If it's your event, you you put it at whatever price you want because that's what you feel. Um, we always wanted to keep costs low. So okay. We never wanted to charge anyone a super high amount. So for a very long time, uh, we were charging around like 35, 40 quid for a weekend yeah. because it, because we were just like, you know, we're a very small system. like So we can't expect to charge massive prices because it just it won't happen. Mm-hmm. So we would, like, okay, we we'll keep our prices low. What means new people will be able to come in? I mean, the green cloaks is still one of the cheaper options for, yeah. for lot. We're not charging an arm and a leg yeah. to be able to come because we know that we have to keep our costs down to be able to be a viable option for, for new people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. That's great. But, and that's great, especially considering how hard it is the most to keep our prices down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, land, land costs and what have you. And, you know, when, when um, I know Luke was sort of uh, doing a lot of with sort of Balrog gaming and what have you, he was constantly negotiating the price and kind of, well, almost doing a little bit of fr- free work for them. You know, yeah. we, we, you know they could get a, a, a better price, you know, kind of. So well, that, really that take, was it. That take was it on the chin, wasn't it? You yeah. Know. I found it's. I found something they wanted uh, that it just so happens that I do for a living. Yeah. Um, and so it was very unofficial, and and it had to come to an end. There, there was there was no way that it could continue. Um, but yeah, for a couple of years, we managed to negotiate a lower rate, which meant that, you know, we could keep prices down. But you are right that um, I think it is important, especially where you've got a, a kind of storyline where you meet up four or five times a year. If you're then expecting people to shell out one, two hundred pound at the end of that weekend, you know, with all the food yeah. and travelling down and then the cost of the ticket, you know, you can see that then it doesn't become, a, you know, kind of just a hobby. It becomes, you know, it becomes a holiday. Very expensive. It becomes a holiday. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've touched on something else there, actually, um, as to how is it different? How is it? How does it bounce? We, we're based in the south. Yeah. Um, a lot of people mm-hmm. have looked at me and gone, you're mad. What are you doing? And I'm going, I'd like to see there be more LARPs of this style, large scale in the south. And by that, I mean sort of Kent, Sussex region, because there are very nice sites down here. But I yeah. do also accept that it's a long way and the M25 is a horrible, horrible road. In fact, it's three <laughs> stuck together and branded the M25 because that was the London Orbital. But, you know, um, every time that someone from the south wants to go to a LARP, 99% of the time they have to go north. It's quite nice to be able to say, well, yeah. Yeah. There yeah, is yeah. something as well on your doorstep. Um mm. and that's not me saying anything against any other laps. It is just the sheer fact of the way yeah. it is. No, yeah, no, that's, yeah. that's in the UK that's exactly how it is. The majority of the big laps are sort of they centrally located. <laughs> and yeah. if you're sort of in the south or the north or the west or the north, look you're, you're travelling a fair distance. Every and time. Not, yeah. This is not to rule out that we will not be looking at sites slightly further. Um, up than we currently are in the future. Um, south, but, south, uh, south Wales is a lovely place, mate. Just saying. Oh, yeah. oh I, I, trust me, <laughs> trust me, it is. <laughs> I, I, it's quite funny. Whenever I'm in Wales, I tend to head to the north and head straight up under the railways. But that's just me. <laughs> Gorgeous, yeah. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm gonna, currently, I'm, you're at uh, Broadstone, are you not? Yep, that's that's where we are, Broadstone, Warren. A, 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 mm-hmm. sc- a scout camp looks really nice as a site, yeah. I have to say. It looks yeah. really, really nice. I'm looking at it now, um, only because it's on your website. And it mm. just looks as if, you know, because looking at your, your website, there's quite a lot of, um, you know, kind of law when it comes to the regiments, the planets, the races, um, yeah. you know, quite a lot of in-depth information. And I think to actually make that pull off, you kind of need a really big site. So you've got lots mm. of different locations that you could then say, right, this is this planet. These are, you know, your regimental kind of um, fields. Uh, and it looks as if that site can actually really take that on board. It can. It's it's a mm. difficult thing to manage, though, um, yeah, because yeah. obviously it's one of the major southern scout centres. Yeah. Um, so it's in use an awful lot. Um, so we will sometimes end up in the same place several times and we you know we do turn around and say to people where hey we're here again 
Um, I think we've got our little area now that we use and they're letting us slowly renovate. Like you said, we we, we go in and we do work on the site for them. Yeah. Um, and they let us do all sorts of stuff. Um, so it, it, it's a case of we scratch their back and they scratch ours. They're, they're one failing. If anybody was ever going to look at running a system, there is. They do need more toilets, but because of their... Uh, yeah. planning permission and restrictions mm. they can't put them in mm. so that that would yeah. be the one warning i would give anyone if they were looking at yeah, that site but the, yeah. the, i would dare to say that nearly every site has to have that compromise yeah. and i think that's down to mm. the organization then isn't it uh whoever's running the the event that you you just have to be very very clear about what is there and then yeah. people can make decisions and about how it is they're going to you know kind of deal with that on the weekend yeah but having so, said that so whether site, you, you've got so whether Sorry, so, so whether or not they actually eat that that vindaluka re or not the night before, you know? <laughs> yeah, and then decide to go to the furthest part of the field. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> You've seen Stuart sweated out quite a few times at Balrog Gaming and whiskey. Yeah. Um, oh dear. But yeah. then, I mean, it's it, but I mean I've been right across the the country when it comes to um, LARPing events, mm. and I, I dare to say that some of the nicest events I've been to have had very few facilities. In fact, it's actually yeah. more been more about the event um and then you, you get events where they have a go and you're thinking do you know what you just haven't thought this through it seems to almost be the you know kind of the one toilet just to show willing um and then other events we start <laughs> going wow a shower room really my god you're spoiling us it's like ferrero roche um, <laughs> so you know it, it is and, and i think it's it's more about the um you know the, the the atmosphere, which is is what you say, and that's why I was kind of pleased about you you're saying you are encouraging new people to come over. Oh, yeah. That's really really good. So um, the only the well, only yeah. the only reason oh, Luke sorry. Luke was happy about the show is is because it was co-ed, and that that was the only reason he was happy. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, fun, a funny story, actually. In, in no, Norway. don't go down that road. We can get sued. you're you're safe you're safe don't worry don't worry it's it's not about you it's not about you that's cool um there there was a conversation going on between me and a fairly uh someone who was new to the hobby yeah and they were saying so where have you lapped because i'd I'd mentioned some of the systems that i'd been to pre Mm -hmm. pre gc because i went around a lot of places and i was looking at how they all did how they all worked differently what was there what wasn't yeah and what what was missing and that that was one of the things that made me sort of go where I went with green cloaks in in the whole mixing up the nerf guns with the the medieval weapons uh and everything else it, it just wasn't there in 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 the size or or standard that I'd seen or, or no. wanted so I went for it yeah but um ha- have any of you ever lapped in Scotland just as a as a an off the cuff no. this will re- reel back into the story okay. no I, no I have to say yeah no, because you know, uh, number one, it's far away. Number two, yeah. um, all the all the is fried Mars bars and things. So <laughs> yeah, that's not as much of a problem. It's just that we've both got high cholesterol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, they're, 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 I mean, the environmentalists are constantly complaining about what happens if anything actually drinks their blood. Oh God, no. Oh. I, I, I will say, I will say that you know there is the healthy option, haggis. You've just got to chase it around the wrong way around the mountain. <laughs> oh, oh no! <laughs> Do you know what, um, Stuart? I've got a tin for New Year. You get, uh, from, of what? I've got a tin of haggis. Yeah, then you I, can I'll, keep I'll that. It open. You can keep that to yourself, all right. And you can you can open that in another country as far as when I'm you lose at cards against humanity, you will be eating it with me, and we'll both be sick together. There's, there's to together, <laughs> Luke. Okay? There's a small. I see a little flaw in your problem. Okay, in 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 the whole situation, <laughs> vegetarian. They do veggie um, haggis. It's fine. Shut yeah, up, that's shut up, Ennis. Shut you up. So much. <laughs> <laughs> I spent four years across the wall. You can't escape. <laughs> yes, I can. I've got a lot to answer for. Um, but I, I'm, not, I'm just looking at all the photographs because I tell right. you what, my my son would love this because of the Nerf element. He's got a couple of Nerf guns. In fact, he's actually got one that is is a complete automatic. I, I can't even tell you what it's called. It's a big orange thing, um, mm-hmm. and and it just literally it fires. You know, kind of about fifteen of the the, the large style bullets 
um, you know, kind of almost simultaneously. It's a huge yeah. thing, you know, kind of. I wish, I wish everybody could see this. Sammy's face on, or the way we're looking. He, it's the biggest grin. Oh yes, Sammy knows that gun. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, so and, <laughs> and he just he, he fired it at me. And I don't think I've run that hard in my life because you're sat there going, "He won't hurt, Dad." And I thought, "Yeah, no, no, no that's right." Yeah. Point blank, it will in my head. <laughs> Well, he's, yeah. he's, do, he's doing the, the monsters for GC, and obviously the, the guns have slowly got better over time. Yeah. Um, because I've run the monster team for such a long period of time, I, I've had every Nerf gun shot at me. Yeah. <laughs> there is one on the market that I haven't been shot with, like, repeatedly, <laughs> whether it be automatic or anything else, I have been shot with it. So yeah. <laughs> I, I know these, but I know your pain. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it's no, it's great because again it's about the inclusion isn't it and uh i kind of yeah. like nerf guns uh just just like i like the um you know kind of uh bow and arrow basically and long bows and you know kind of i, I just think it, they're, they're amazing and fun to have if they're used properly you know yeah. um but i noticed that there is a, a photo on your website of uh, mm -hmm. everyone hiding in amongst the the brush and it, it leads me to the story of uh, um you know kind of i had a, a yeah. bard called cliffhanger uh, and the photograph, everyone's kind of hiding away in cliffhanger. Just he had to sing everything really, really loud. Um, <laughs> we came across a massive bunch of uh, orcs that were moving through the uh, forest. Yeah. And basically I thought, I've got to do this. And I shouted, uh, well, I sang it. And I went, Christ, I hope they don't see us. And then exactly as everyone just sat there and just went, oh, no, <laughs> completely missed the point. And I thought that, that would be just, just reminded me of everyone there hiding really well and then me and Stuart coming and ruining it all. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> fun, fun story, fun so, story. So and, and, um, and, and, anyway, Ennis, back back to Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's giving me another one. I'll come back to it in a minute. Anyway, back to Scotland. We we were sitting and I said, I don't think I ever have. I don't think I ever have. And he said, well, you've been up there for four years. How can you not? And I said, I don't know if there are any. And then there's this one, my one of my friends uh, from Edinburgh turned around and went, do you know why? Do you know why there's not? Because <laughs> it's too bloody cold and most of you Brits wouldn't survive. <laughs> I love, I love, I love the fact that they call us Brits. I know, I, I know. <laughs> well, they probably call us brothers because we're Welsh, but you know, apart from that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're all it, was just, it was sort of the thought of, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Is there anything up there? So I, if not, if, if, you know, if Green Cloaks fails, give it 10 years, you might see a LARP appearing in Scotland and something else, and that, that might not work either. <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of, a lot of land in Scotland. Oh, it smells from anywhere. Oh, yes. We should do one if they decide to become uh, separated, and that will be the storyline. Yeah. Scots yeah. versus the Brits. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can see, I can see this as a place of... Uh, <laughs> No. Dangerous conversation. Ah. Well, that's, that's not a bad lap the idea, actually. Then, it, I, well, that would be the start of it, wasn't it? If you want to get war past separation. that. That'd be fun, though. A, a war separation laugh. Oh, it'd be brilliant. The people you need to talk to there who have many, many years experience are the guys who uh, run the Roman fort on Hadrian's oh, yeah. Wall. Yeah. They know yeah. all about that sort of game. Mm. Oh, that would be pretty good. <laughs> Except um, I just get this nasty feeling that people would stop using Nerf guns and probably transfer <laughs> to real ones. <laughs> ah, no, 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 no. We, we don't play with Thursday weapons at LARP. We know this. <laughs> Thursday weapons. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so what's your other story then, Ennis? The, the other story harks back to about three years ago. Um, there is a picture somewhere of Sammy sitting at a bar and then there's a werewolf's head just leaning over his shoulder. Anyway... Mandela Werewolf, I'd never worn one before. I was out and about on the first evening just getting used to it. And yeah. I hear this, this little voice from within a bush, in the next bush but one, and you hear, uh, guys, I kind of want to go back. I'm not, I'm not a massive fan of the dark. And credit to her, whoever was with them went, oh, don't worry, Private, it's fine. It's not like a werewolf's going to jump out of the woods or anything at you. You're perfectly <laughs> safe. We've got guns. And I thought... <laughs> I, I sort of looked at the ref who was with me, my sort of minder. I, I need one wherever I go around my lap system so I don't cause chaos. <laughs> it's often it's it's often Sammy, but not anymore. Um, 
And it, the, the person's response was, well, and it's your system. I'm going back to the ref hut. <laughs> 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 and like any good, kind system runner that I was, I, I, I didn't go around the bush. I went through it and said, hello, in a big werewolf howl. <laughs> and you just heard, the, the, the words that I heard were, shit, Sarge, you lied. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous, excellent. What I loved about that is that he was afraid of the dark. <laughs> I'm, thinking, I, I'm going to go for the diversion here. In, in, in it's, what are them in the werewolf costumes like? I've seen them in play a few times, but I've never had the chance to wear one. Comfy. Comfy. <laughs> comfy. Um, comfy, but very that hard. That sounds like an age thing, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but once you get past a certain time in, you know, kind of LARPing life, you just... Everything is comfortable. comfortable. Everything is comfortable. <laughs> you're on a comfy, cosy werewolf and sex. Yes. Um, um, so vampires, they're all spandex. You just go for a werewolf, it's all yeah. lovely, comfy waists and <laughs> all the masks are really nice and warm. And, well, you know, you the, get... the one that I had was, was good. I will say yeah. that much. Um, I think um, the, the one thing I'd, I'd warn you about is if ever you're wearing it, don't wear it in the middle of the summer and run around an open field in it. You, you will turn into a blob of sweat. <laughs> just a yeah. I can believe that. <laughs> I bet, yeah. <laughs> now, you mentioned something that triggered something, your son. Um, yes. One thing that Green Cloaks does differently is we have no one under the age of 16. Mine. Some people some people agree with this. Some people say, oh, I can't come because of that, and they're very upset by it. And I often have people asking, hi, can I bring my son if he stays with me, or can I bring my daughter if they stay with me? And I have to say no, mm. because Green Cloaks is um, a system which deals uh, with you being on the front line. Yeah. And some of, the, some of the situations that you run into are things that you would see or simulations of things that you would mm. see in that situation. Okay. Um, so yeah. we we do come with that age rating for a reason. Um, so it also means that so we can rendered, explore those things. Yeah, rendered bodies and, and, and all the rest of it. So yeah. Yeah. horror I can, and I can, gore. I can yeah, pretty do with that. Yeah. Certainly with um, certainly with the more psychological things as well, uh, mm. what a soldier goes through being able to explore the lulls between the battles and then how people deal with the battles and the situations they're faced because they are soldiers and if they're ordered to do something they've yeah. got to do it but yeah, they yeah. can then decide how they do it yeah that's, and that's 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 a big thing that we've not huge. shirked away from uh, the plot writers have really gone to town and been amazing with it something um, came to mind then i'm going to kill you but i'm going to do it through the medium of mime <laughs> it has happened. <laughs> through, through the medium of dance, through the medium of contemporary <laughs> dance. <laughs> it's funny, you know, I've just looked up to someone and just gone like started doing jazz. And then... <laughs> okay, it worked. Oh look, we are so so like a laugh and walk got in the middle of your head. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> we'll, we'll... We'll never get the R rating. Are you having a laugh? <laughs> no, no, no. No. I just had this picture of people suddenly going, well, I will kill them eventually. They are going to die. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll dance for you right now. Stroke the cat. So, just oh. to, so congratulations, just, guys! I couldn't breathe just then. It's all right now. <laughs> <laughs> Green Cloaks will continue right. running next year. <laughs> so, so <laughs> just just out of curiosity, there, there, and right. So, if if I'm coming along as a new player, then what what can I yeah. what can I expect? Yeah, what what, what, what what's there? What, 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 people, what people end up with? First and foremost, uh, you'll be met by a really friendly bunch. Um, there's there's one thing that I've heard. Uh, from new people, it's everyone's so welcoming, but I think that's something that runs true to luck wherever you go. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah. Now, what can you expect? Um, you will be given the choice as you create your character to choose a regiment um, and choose a class. Um, so you can really choose your specialization, I suppose, um, as to what you do. Your timings are a little bit different. So obviously we start on a Friday, usually about seven o'clock, and we run to midnight. We stop at midnight, uh, whereas some systems go a little bit longer, but we like to stop at midnight so that uh, our refs and our monsters 
and our players note this is optional can get their beauty sleep <laughs> yeah thank you yeah um <laughs> And and the, we often run into talks about whether whether it should go on till one or not. But we we we've decided that uh, the next morning, come Saturday, which is your big day, you will be getting up at 10 a.m. Um, we hope so that you can engage in the day right the way through till midnight, and you will be in your regiment's sort of area or camp, and they're they're fairly close to each other. So if trouble really kicks off in one camp, you can run to them and aid them. And I have seen it where uh, someone has come running from a camp going, help, I'm the only one left, please. And you just see this whole blob of people mobilize into this other, into the rear of this other camp. And you get the whole fighting for the area, fighting for the zones, much like some people might see in games like Battlefield or Battlefront, in a oh, way. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, we have our, our big battles uh, throughout the, the course of the weekend. We have two. So yeah. much like... Um, CP's element of you yeah. play one battle, you monster another. Uh, yeah. And we find that works very nicely because then you have this, who's going to be fighting with who? What are the goals? What are the aims? Yeah. And then you get the chance to see how these different regiments fight together and use their skills and their, their specializations. Okay. I like so it. there's a little bit of a, a flouncy answer if you want to perhaps uh, dig a little bit deeper. Um, okay. I'm sure Sammy, Sammy's probably got the practical answer again. Okay, quick, quick question. If, if, I, if, we, if somebody was to come to a game, from what you've just said, would that mean that, that they can expect to be sort of camping in an in-character camp? Um, well, there's, a, there's, 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 a, there's <coughs> options there. So pretty much we've... So you've got your four regiments and then... <clears throat> If you have, like, for example, with the regiment that I run currently at the moment, the 109th, um, it's if your, you know, your 10th is kind of like it fits in character, then mm -hmm. we're putting you there. If I've got the space to put you in, I will do. Yeah. Um, if you've got like a bright pink tent, I'm, I'm not going to put you in because there's an out of character sleeping area. Well, so, like yeah, so, yes, that's, that's completely as, as, long yeah. as, as long as it fits in character. And, that, you know, we've done it before that someone's had like a slightly, you know, off blue. And then I've had some cam netting in, in one of my bags. And I'm just like, right, OK, well, you want to you want to stay? Cool. All right. And just throw the cam netting over. And it's kind of worked. So there's, there's always kind of that thing. Of, if it works, if it looks cool, then we'll keep it. If it doesn't, then unfortunately, it's the out of character sleeping area. The setting, again, is really nice for that because we've got the, the capacity to say yes to more stuff, whereas um, Fantasy LARPs, it's, you'll see more bell tents than you will see plastic tents yeah. or uh, polyurethane tents. These, these, this system, you can turn around and go, well, it's green, it's black, it's, it's dark blue, and it's, it's big, and it it's, can be made to fit, you know. Yeah, okay, cool. We have that flexibility. Um, I would always encourage people to come if they want to sleep in character. I'd encourage it to be done as yeah. part of a group tent. Um, and that's mm. being really pushed through partially for space management, partially for safe fighting zones and everything else. So you still got the safety first element, but yeah, yeah. Um, there are always ways in which we will try and make it happen if, if you really, really want to do it and um, you've got the right um, mindset to do it. All right. The only, thing, the only thing I find about having in character tents that you actually sleep in as well is that, uh, you know, because a lot of the storyline will happen and you can have skirmishes start off in tents, that, that can become a real problem, especially like me. I mean, I've got a, um, you know, a bell tent. I will have a, the Emperor tent, which is twice the size of a bell tent. So mm. you've got loads of space there, but I don't think I'd feel happy about people, you know, kind of role playing to, in a physical way in that tent because it's just too many yeah. things that can go wrong, you know. Yeah. I mean, we, we tend to say don't fight in tents just because. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's all well and good. It's all well and good. Um, to say, oh, wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be cool? But the last thing I want to do at night is go back to my bed, fall into my bed, and find one of these sodding things peppered across my blanket, a, a Nerf dart all over my bedding and everything else. It's just like, oh, for heaven's sake, not again. You know, so we say fight outside rather than inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. No, that's, that's fair. Uh, one of the one um, that I'll just bring up, just because uh, Ennis missed out on the first part, um at the beginning of every event um at around about half si uh, about six o'clock half six we have a player briefing um yeah and that's pretty much that you just run through the rules um you know you run through calls 
uh, what to do in different situations. Um, so it's for any new people coming in, uh, they can go to this. Now, <clears throat> what I tend to do with a lot of people in my regiment is I always send them anyway, because mm -hmm. it's not a bad thing. Remember, like just rehashing over calls because there's a few of them and you need to always just remind yourself of what they are from time to time. Yeah. So it's yeah. one of those things that can really help a new player as well. And obviously everyone's there. So they get to kind of meet everyone as well. Also kind of a nice thing as well. It's kind of yeah, that yeah, kickoff yeah. thing before you get into character. Uh, so that's one of the things we do as well at the beginning of every event. Nice. Okay. Well, I think that's good, and it's, it shows as well that just just because you're experienced doesn't necessarily mean that you know you shouldn't be going to these kind of meetings. And, that, and I think that inspires the you know kind of the newbies to 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 see that you're taking it as seriously as you want them to. Um, we used to do mystery where we'd you have like areas where you just go and play fight at first, just to just to learn. Because if you're only doing it once a year, then it's hard, isn't it, to pull your blows? You forget because yeah. you're not doing it all the time how to do that. Yeah. Um, and so we, well, we don't ever pull, pull our blows yeah, against each we, other because, well, that would just be rude. Yeah. Um, but, you know, kind of we, we do, you know, and, and, and it is, and you can go very, very hard well, we, we, um, and not even realise it. We tend to, we, you know, whenever, whenever Luke and I uh, uh, do stuff together, we, we do tend to run a workshop, um, <laughs> you know, for, for new players and old players alike. Uh, and we'll have either want to just brush up on skills or, or, or learn new skills um, in that respect. Uh, mm -hmm. And we normally bring in, you know, there's always a, a few people within within the systems that, that, that you're, you're, you're running uh, who are very proficient uh, fighters and bring them in as well to uh, to try and see if we can learn a, a, perhaps a few new weapons safely and that sort of thing at, at the same time. So we, we always tend to do that, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And I, I think it's a good idea for any system to try to adopt that because especially when new players come in, they haven't got a clue what, you know, uh, especially in, in, in the heat of battle, they might yes. just go gung-ho and go for it, you know. And I think it's like, well, we haven't actually <laughs> taught, you know, you know, taught this person that um, by the way, we're all friends and don't actually want to get skewered. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, I, mm. I, I, it's a good idea. Oh, stop safe spears are scary things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, since you actually sort of began, you know, sort of running this, what's it's been about six years now, something like that. Yeah, yeah. about that. Yeah, 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 okay. So, so what has changed then since you actually began this whole system? You know, what what sort of mm. things have you improved on or scrapped or or whatever? Um. There's well, to be honest, there's there's been a like a lot of stuff. So we've gone through like uh, two, three versions of the rules. Yeah. Um, you know, we've modified them and kind of got them a bit more up to date. I mean, we used to use um, like double calls. So back in the very beginning days, you know, if you had a two-handed weapon, it would call you know a double hit, you know, double points. Yeah. Um, but then it kind of we we felt that they wouldn't really you know wasn't really working. For us, so it was just a single. Is it embarrassing um, that I forgot that? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's no, why no. I'm here. That's why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, you've got things like that. You've got um, <clears throat> like the introduction of like new Nerf guns that come like have come out from from yeah. back then. A lot of them were spring, like just spring, and then we've gotten into the point of where now they're like all made with batteries, or even the newer ones that are the the circular uh, um, kind of darts. They're not really darts, but they're nerf bullets. Um, the rival so rounds. Have, yeah, the rival rounds. Um, okay. And it's, there's, there's people have changed as well. Um, and I think for us, uh, back in the very beginning when we were first doing it, because it was the first time I had ever met Ennis, it was, um, hey, do you want to come and do this? Because I know one of your friends. And I'm just like, ah, well, he said, if I don't buy him a birthday present and just go to this event, I, I don't have to buy someone a birthday present. So yeah. <laughs> met Ennis and I was just like all right cool we're gonna help you out and because there was no one else doing the monster team it was pretty much just me at that time yeah. um it was I then became his you know right hand man as such you know I would it would be what we would talk together come up with ideas and there's been a lot of other like senior members of the team that have come and gone but it's we've kind of very much stuck it together. out yeah mm. yeah we've stuck it out and it's we've seen everything change I mean one of one of the really nice things that was back in the day uh, was I remember always hearing uh, a quote and it was I had heard it from Kevin Smith and it was I think he was quoting uh, Wayne Gretzky and it was pretty much um, don't go where the puck 
is go where it's going to be. Hmm. And that was a massive kind of mu- like mantra for me and Ennis when we were kind of pushing things forward. It's like, well, we don't want to go where all the other larks are. We want to go where it's going to be. And then yeah. we kind of got to that stage and then <clears throat> everyone would, you know, we would get there and then like a year later, everyone else would be there. And it was kind of like, yeah, okay, yeah. well, now we have to change again. So, so where, where, where is um, the puck going to be now then? That's it. It's, it's finding it now. It's going, okay, well, you know, we've, we've now started to use... Yeah, where next? I mean, we started to use more uh, pyrotechnics in our, yeah. in our... So that's really putting up the calibre of, of our style of events that we're doing. So it's going, okay, well, we got there. So where do we go next? And that's yeah, something yeah. that, you know, us as a team have to work out. Where do we go next? LARP, safe landmines, what? Anything <laughs> 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 um, is LARP safe once. Work. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> how do you get that landmine to actually kind of just spew out latex uh, in a kind of a way? Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's completely LARP safe it's, until it's, it's, you it's, use it's, it. It's fine. It's a trade secret. It's still under development. We can't really talk about it. Maybe another talk down the line. Oh, wow. Oh, okay, okay. 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 Right. Not too coming, not too Everything, yeah, so everything, can... everything is LARP safe until you use it. <laughs> Those poor, poor test subjects. I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> what you don't realise is all those people on the photographs, half of them don't, uh, have gone missing. Uh, they've never come back. They've actually gone to the events, but then they've come back again. Yeah. It's, it's all there. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We, we don't know where half of them have gone. So it's... Yeah. Yeah. You lose so many. It's such a big site, though. I, I can so, totally see where you would lose them. <laughs> Bury them. Sorry, lose them. Yeah. <laughs> Don't lose them, yeah. Uh, yeah blah, blah, blah. <laughs> All right, so so um, <laughs> where can actually, <laughs> should, should they want to now, where should, you know, how can people get in contact with you and, and find out information about what yeah. you do? I mean, I mean, big standard um would be the website which is www.greencloaks.co.uk um failing that if you're a facebook user i would say jump on there type in the green cloaks chatter box there'll be people there players Mm. uh who are willing to give you a hearty welcome and and uh show you around and introduce you to other Mm. things like the various regimental groups and stuff like that but your main touch base will be the website and it is the plan that by next year we will be able to do pre-bookings as well. Oh, wait, also, yeah. if you've got a question that you don't think has been answered, you can email us as well. Okay. There's a big old contact us button up there with all of the different emails. Yeah. So you can send it to who you want to get it to. That's awesome. Yeah, that, 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 <laughs> that sounds fantastic. I'd, actually, I'd like to recommend Green Close Chat. I've kind of been skulking around in there for a little bit ooh, and ooh. a really good group so uh, you've been stalking I mean, again you mean Rob I, I have been stalking yeah. again yeah yeah, yeah. there's bound to be another restraining order soon yeah well yeah. you know you've got so many now it's uh, you may as well just hey, just up hey they're decorating, the my, they're decorating my walls now no, great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh fantastic so um, I, I think I think uh, I think we're we're scheduling aren't we to actually come down and visit you guys uh, in the yeah. new year <laughs> is uh uh, is that correct? That'd be lovely. Yeah, to have. yeah fantastic. Yeah. Um, Luke, you, you up for that? So, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah. yes. there we oh. go. Then. There we go. Yes. I'm uh, sure there is a Cards Against Humanities box available somewhere on site. <laughs> and, some, <laughs> and some monster bits of the new mime uh, werewolf that we're going to create. <laughs> oh, yeah. And just let everybody know that other card games are available. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, they're not. <laughs> Well, thank you, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you this evening. Um, this is going to go out uh, probably on every single format that we've got, but it is going to, going to be audio uh, because of a few technical problems that we had this evening. Uh, thank you, Internet, and everything that can go wrong did go wrong. Uh, so, 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 again, thank you very much for coming along. It's an, it was an absolute pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all very much. Absolutely. Thank you very much. So this yeah, is uh, this is basically uh, me, Stuart, Luke, Rob, Ennis, and Sammy saying good night to you all. Good night. Good, good night. night world. <laughs> I actually saw myself waving on an audio. I did that as well. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> you guys aren't alone. It's all right. I was waving to you, Luke. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Let's go with that. <laughs>